Go ahead and roll for perception. I got an 18. Ooh, 18 is really good. With that, you can see some advertising space available. So you're telling me if I have a product, YouTube channel, or podcast that I want advertised, I could do it here? That's right, and you can get more details by emailing thedungeoncast at gmail.com. Awesome. I'll have to do that. Thank you very much. Enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Brian. And I'm Will. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from close calls to king killers. And today, we're talking about the Kraken. The Kraken. All right, Brian. All right, let's do it on three. It's time One, to get, two, three. It's time to get cracking. Release the Kraken. Oh, okay, uh, I was just making a pun. Oh. <laughs> I was like, it's time to get cracking. I guess I should tell. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> pretty good. I guess I should tell you what we're supposed to do on three. Yeah, you know, I do need some forewarning, okay. but uh, I think you've been forewarned that we're talking about Krakens today, so let's yeah. do it. I did the intro. Indeed, I know you, all about it. Indeed, you did. So Krakens are not a D&D original concept, uh, obviously. They're based off the mythological Scandinavian cephalopodic sea monster of the same name. I love cephalopods. Uh, yeah, I remember when I accidentally called a dolphin a cephalopod on the show. When I, I meant cetacean, but I got the words mixed up. We offend the the study of biology in the show. <laughs> we do. Frequently. I do my best, but here we are. So Our according best is not good enough. <laughs> and, yeah, according to the Norse sagas, uh, the Kraken dwelt off the coasts of Norway and Greenland, where it terrorized untold generations of sailors. The original depictions of the fictitious beast were a strange mix of crab and whale characteristics, actually. Uh, it wasn't until the 18th century that the uh, modern depiction of this, uh, you know, colossal squid or octopus kind of came into, like, this homogenized version. Because I bet one washed up on a beach somewhere and they were like, it's not a crab whale, it's this thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's probably <laughs> exactly what happened. I'm more <laughs> terrified of the crab whale, honestly. Can we get that? Can we get Can that we get a stat block for that? <laughs> That'd be funny. Wizards, are you, are you there? <laughs> the colossal crab whale. <laughs> um, so D&D Krakens are gargantuan monstrosities that dwell in the deepest and darkest parts of the ocean, uh, pretty much uncontested. Uh, they are rarely ever seen near the surface, but are feared worldwide due to the stories of ships being dragged beneath the waves by them and islands even scoured of life by these monsters because mm. these things can breathe air and they can crawl on land and they're fucking horrifying. Wow. Yeah. They're considered truly malevolent creatures uh, among the most evil of all monsters. So they're not like mindless, uh, like monsters they're <laughs> they're not like mindless forces of nature i mean they can be portrayed that way but they're actively wicked and malevolent beings okay so um, they they plot they, they plot they scheme they scheme okay. and we're gonna get all into that like all of the most notable monsters in the fiction of dungeons and dragons right so all the way up until fifth edition krakens in D D were depicted as essentially like goddamn humongous squids with a few key differences, uh, the the most obvious one being of its ten tentacles, two are much longer than the other eight and are ended with multiple long, sharp barbs for cool. just stabbing. I thought uh, for a sec- I thought all of them would have barbs in them. Like no, just suckers. just the two super long ones. That's cool. Um, the rest just have suckers. Those so are the feeding bobs. Yeah. The second uh, difference is that D and D Krakens are hyper intelligent creatures capable of speaking multiple languages via telepathy. Uh, 5e Krakens are not described as looking different in any source book I could find, but the 5e Monster Manual has an illustration that gives it more of a fish-like or reptilian look. Um, I I definitely highly recommend you go look at the depiction in the Monster Manual, but I'll do my best to describe it. I have a picture right here. So essentially, it looks like it has like a fish-like head with like horns yeah it's almost got the shape of a koi fish like the way it's kind of like serpentining a little bit yeah like kind of in the main body and maybe up in the head area but the back end is like totally wild yeah it's it's chin has like these weird tendrils it seems to have like razor sharp like shark teeth um it has like these weird has like these weird turtle like fins that i guess it would swim with like almost like a humanoid torso on top and then at the bottom it turns into basically all squid and it splays out into a bunch of tentacles yeah it's a really cool look i really like it um and i think it looks way more interesting than just a giant squid but i'm not sure why they made the change really and like i find it interesting that in the description uh in the monster manual it doesn't actually physically describe the monster so it's like even though this one artist made it look different is this the canon 5e look i'm not sure 
I would bet yes. I mean, I, I think like, so, and I, I I like it. And personally, I'll, I'll make the change because I think that looks fucking cool. I mean, there's no reason. It's not that much different functionally than what we're looking no, at. No, no, it's other purely that, aesthetic. Those horrific rows of teeth I can see. Yeah, but I think that's cool. I like that it basically is an amalgamation of a giant sea turtle, a shark, a fish, and a squid. Yes. That's fucking yeah. cool. It would be really crazy to have like football sized ones that you throw at people like footballs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be bad. That would be bad for anywhere that landed on you. <laughs> for sure. Um, now, the discrepancy in what it appears like is actually somewhat fitting since a big part of the mystery of the Kraken is what it looks like and where it comes from. Um, most that ever encounter a Kraken and manage to live almost all always only ever see the enormous tentacles and a dark shadowy form beneath, but they never actually see what the mysterious monster looks like. Right. So I kind of like that there's this like in lore now discrepancy of like what it even looks like in real life. Well, I mean that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, you wouldn't see the whole form of mm -hmm. a regular crack and it just come, kind of wraps your boat and, and uh, submerges drags it. Drags it down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But to get some more concrete, uh, like physical stats on the Kraken, uh, your average Kraken is roughly a hundred feet long, weighs about 4,000 pounds, um, and that's about 30 meters long or 1,800 kilograms in weight for our non-Americanized uh, audience. I said, hey, I was gonna, thanks. Yeah. someone sent us an email saying, asking us if I can like unlocalize it. And I was like, yeah, sure. No problem. I'll do my best to remember. So I did this time. That's a really positive change for the show. <laughs> yeah, thanks absolutely. for doing that. Yeah, no problem. So Krakens uh, actually never stop growing and they are biologically immortal, kind of like aboliths. And yeah, so the older they get, the bigger they get, the more powerful they get. Kind of like more, dragons too. <laughs> the more the more brain functionality they seem to have trouble with. Perhaps. Like, like an, I, I thought of the Abolith right senile. now. They get senile. I almost thought um, when you were initially describing it, I was like, oh, and the look of it, I was like, this is a beholder that you put in, in water. And Kinda. it changes like those There's... little foam pellets that you put and they turn into dinosaurs or whatever. Sure. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, I do. I okay. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so like I said, <laughs> Krakens are dry Krakens. You heard it here. Sure. Krakens are truly wicked and malevolent creatures, like I was saying before, with a tendency to be aggressive, cruel, and destructive. They see the entire ocean as their kingdom by right and all who dwell within or sail upon it as their food, their subjects, and their slaves. Nice. Speaking of slaves, Krakens are noted to keep and breed entire societies of human slaves deep in their underwater layers where they carve out air park pocket caverns for the humanoids to live in. Oh, geez. So we're talking about like entire generations of mad humans who've only ever known the <laughs> darkness and the horrifying wrath of their Lovecraftian master. And like their overhumidified environment. What Indeed. are they doing? What is it having them? Po what could it ha possibly have them be doing? <laughs> Making like giant spears for it to throw? That'd I mean, sick. it wasn't explicitly stated. And I had kind of the same question as well i just like um, slaves i just like slaves i like them to move those rocks over there i just need to be like all the other bad D, &D monsters i need um, slaves every good I D, &D, D bad guy's got slaves it's mostly a farm for food probably oh, is probably no. the, yeah is, that's probably the most common thing um that doesn't you don't I need that could ha i could see them like raising them almost like um like uh, cultivating them as a cult and so you can use them as like your link to the surface. Yeah, you can send them to the surface to war for you and whatnot if you like really indoctrinate them. Sure, we'll like, get more into concepts like that later. Like Loch Ness style, move into like a lake and like, yeah, which krakens do humans. do. Yeah, oh, they do no. do that. Um, so yeah, so I mean, there there are some things that I'm sure they could do with humanoid slaves, but are, do we have an Abolith association? So kinda. Okay. Um, it wasn't really stated that they hate each other, but I would imagine they would fucking hate each other because they're way oh. too similar. Um. But there is so when it comes to the origins of the Krakens, it like every single edition and every single book has its own version of that. And one in I think it was Dragon Magazine number three three thirty four, where it said like one of the debated origins was maybe the Avalis created the Krakens in their war against the gods. But oh wow, that, there could be a million different origins, and we're gonna get into that later in the okay. episode. So I have a cool campaign concept yeah. later. Okay, cool. So in all of their malevolence and destruction, um, there is an ancient and intelligent purpose and ambition to the things that they do. Uh, Kraken spend much of their time plotting and slowly advancing their conquest against the various peoples of the sea. Mm -hmm. uh, Triton, sea elves, merfolk, and other good aquatic uh, creatures are enemies of Krakens. Uh, and Krakens being immortal, they, they really play the long game when it comes to making moves against like these civilizations. 
Um, with their calculating minds, they concoct elaborate schemes and breed loyal servants to do their bidding. Uh, they always have a plan, and they rarely put themselves in physical danger. Okay, yeah. Uh, furthermore, being you know egotistical to the highest degree, Krakens never deign to sully their tentacles on grunt work. They just send their minions to do so. Right. Uh, they dominate. They form alliances with, or they indoctrinate others, and they spend uh, and they spread their will for them. Wow, this is like long form. This is long form D and D material where like my mm-hmm. minions aren't coming back anymore. I need to go investigate, and then you right. have to fight the kraken. Yeah, yeah, sure. I know they came to that in Critical Role. Oh, they, did they? They fought the kraken. Oh, it, wow, That's it cool. didn't go well, oh. from what I understand. Yeah, krakens are quite powerful. Yeah. I would say I mean, that they are easily on the same level of like ancient dragons. Sorry for crit roll spoilers. Yeah, that was yeah crit roll spoiler for sure. So cultism is a calming tactic Kraken, Krakens will use to infiltrate humanoid and aquatic societies in order to destroy and subjugate these civilizations from within. Um, there are many tales of sailors finding islands inhabited by Kraken worshiping humans that sacrifice in the name of their deep gods. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And like I was saying, like I just literally said, Krakens are on the same power level as dragons. Uh, they have natural spellcasting abilities as well, uh, like just like dragons, and could theoretically even be warlock patrons. So I could see like a cult of a Kraken wow. and like a Kraken being your warlock patron if you're going like with a great old one or something like that. Yeah, so you could like work... It's probably not meant to be the Kraken, right? Like it's not, but it, it could easily work like that. Um, so you could do the what, same reflavor for dragons? Sure. This is one of my problems with the Warlock uh, for 5e is that there aren't enough pack types. Like there, like there needs to be a dragon one or at least an elemental one because there are a lot of like genies and elemental like primal gods that could be warlock patrons. They're like powerful enough to give magic powers. Exactly. And they, okay. there should be ones like there should basically be one for each like planar kind of thing too. Like there's now a Shadowfell one, I'm pretty sure. Um, but there needs to be like an elemental planes one, one for each all four of the planes, or like a general one, and then you could choose one of the planes. If you were in charge of the staff who would write that, would mm-hmm. you instruct them to do one for each type of genie or et cetera? Or would you maybe get like here's a genie base form block? Now, if you're this type mm-hmm. of genie, do this instead of this. Yeah, exactly. I would okay. basically have it like that. So, like, you would choose the elemental patron, and then in within the that actual patron path, there will be like air, fire, water, and earth. So paths. maybe that's the suggestion to homebrew is if you want to use a great old one pact and kind of reflavor some of those, uh, some of those like specific abilities to be like kraken based and based yeah. off of this stat block yeah that will hit and you, you can definitely later. go like elemental water yeah that, yeah i think that would be very fitting pretty cool so yeah so um so a kraken might also form alliances with some of the more powerful aquatic monsters such as like a sea hag mm. or maybe an abolith um that being said i would imagine that krakens and abolith would not be too friendly with each other i mean they're just similar in like all the worst ways like they're immortal they've been around since the dawn of time they hate the gods um they think the sea is theirs to rule completely and all others are for them to there subjugate i was like, like everything's lining up until yeah, that part. yeah exactly i mean basically they fill the same niche it's actually uh it's like why are they so similar like it, I, i'm not sure why that ended up happening like well that. There, there are very probably distinct differences between them also in terms of like ability um, they both have telepathy. Abolists definitely have more like the mind control type of stuff, while Krakens yeah. are more like magical. Well, what's a, an Abolith is like a ch- CR10, right? Oh, yeah. If you're talking about power level, yeah, Abolith CR10, yeah. Kraken CR23. It's a team of Abolith versus a Kraken. 1v1 is a no brainer. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, well, with that being said, I think we can take our, shrunk, our short rest. Yes. Let's do that. We'll be short. All right. <laughs> Man, Krakens are pretty cool, but do you know what's also cool? Getting your D&D characters illustrated by a crazy talented artist. Bubble Laser is a freelance artist on Fiverr.com who has been illustrating D&D characters professionally for two years, and she wants to draw your characters. Bubble Laser has illustrated official logos, podcast art, and board game art, but her passion lies in bringing nerdy people's D&D parties, NPCs, and player characters to life. With hundreds of characters drawn and a five-star rating on Fiverr, you can know your commissioned character will be well taken care of. So click the link in the description, look her up on Fiverr, or find her art page on Facebook or Instagram at Bubble Laser Art and get your characters illustrated today. 
Hey everybody, welcome to the part of the show we're not talking about the last thing we're talking about. We're talking about this new thing. Imagine a chicken parmesan, cut it in half, fold it over onto itself, put it in a tortilla, wrap it up into a burrito, and eat it. You'll feel love inside of you. I hope that's what you feel when you listen to the Dungeon Cast. You that's might also what I feel, feel a heart when... attack, like Jesus. Oh yeah. Well, I saw that on Instagram. Did I follow you? a lot of food stuff on okay. there, and they do. <laughs> they, I saw a chicken parmesan burrito, and I was like, that's probably delicious. That probably tastes but like love. Dear God, yeah, that's exactly what I'm, yeah, you get it. Okay. We love you guys. Thanks for listening to the show. It's we really appreciate it. We want more people to listen to the show. Obviously, there <laughs> is something we're gonna do about that, and it's uh, to ask you a favor. Tell people about the show. Uh, but here's a little here's a little extra on top for you, the listener. Um, we want we want to get. Will you talk about yours? No. Okay. Here's the deal, you guys. We're gonna be giving away. A Kraken Dice Metal Goliath. They're like these big ass metal D20s and they're fucking awesome. And they yeah, just really sound cool. so epic when they hit your table. Mm-hmm. Don't throw it directly onto the wood. Um, especially if it's like your mom's table or something like that. Yeah. Because you're gonna do some damage. And uh, <laughs> when you roll this D20, you're gonna feel like a, you're gonna feel like as powerful as a Kraken. Indeed um, you are. So here's the deal. You need to be following us on Instagram, the Dungeon Cast on Instagram. Go follow us there. There's going to be a post that uh, coincides with the release of this episode on May 13th. Uh, It's going to have all the instructions in that post. Uh, But basically what you're going to want to do is tag two people in the in the comment section below on that Instagram post. And uh, yeah, if as long as you're following the account and you tag two people, we will see it. We will log you down. And on June 13th, one month later. We will do a random drawing, and you will win one of these Metal Goliath Kraken dice. And there's a second way to enter. Uh, Damn straight, <laughs> Will. If you're not on Instagram and you are on Twitter, all you have to do is uh, share a link to the show with hashtag DungeonCast, and that'll also be an entry. I'll be making a list of people that do that between the dates of May 13th and June 13th. You heard it right, folks. You can enter this contest twice. So if you want to be entered, uh, I guess, do we do... Uh, no, it'll be, it's going to yeah, be they can one, enter twice. it's going to be a one winner, two entries. Yeah. One, one winner, but one yeah, winner, two, two entries. entries. Yeah, that's for sure. But yeah, um, it, it would really help us out if you want to follow us on Instagram. We're trying to do a lot more there and, uh, obviously on Twitter as well. Indeed. Um, uh, well, it's just a Twitter, Twitter juggernaut in the D and D community. I? I feel oh. like you are. Oh yeah. Like I look at, I look at the follows. <laughs> I do what I can. Like, oh my gosh. I definitely yes. enjoy running the Twitter feed. So I'm, I'm glad we have as many followers as we do. So thank you everyone. Yeah. For thanks to everybody Twitter. that does already follow us. I don't, we didn't want to bar anybody from like entering. If you really don't want to use Instagram, I don't blame like, you know, it's up to you what social right. media you're into. Right. So, but we do want to spread the word about the show and the best way to do that is with your help. And yes. we really appreciate it whenever you guys do it. So thanks a lot so much. Um, I think we can get back to the show. Yeah. Let's Will, get... are you going to tell two people about the show? Um, yeah. I, I mean, I tell everybody tell about, the, about show the show pretty much all the time. So. Oh, you did a let's get back to the show thing. I let's did. get back to the show. <laughs> all right, we're back. We are back. What's cracking, Will? Um, a lot's cracking. Um, oh, shit. Specifically, the cracking. Yeah, wait to tell my joke, bro. <laughs> So Krakens, as a general rule, um, also despise and distrust each other. Uh, this stands to reason since every Kraken thinks that all other Krakens are evil and selfish, hyper-intelligent monstrosities, and they're right in thinking this. So <laughs> they're like with they're like with their human uh, slaves. <laughs> like, oh. They're chilling, and another Kraken swims by. He's like, look at that guy. He thinks he's so great. <laughs> Fuck him. Yeah, sure. Stupid idiot. And Stupid then that Kraken idiot. hears the other one, and it's like, what'd you say, bro? And they get in a slap fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Sure, yeah. That's, that'd be horrifying. <laughs> Anyways. Be bloody. So Krakens of similar size and strength will uh, safely stay within their own borders that they've carved out uh, and have absolute minimal contact with each other. Okay. Well, a sufficient disparity in size between Krakens will end in either the smaller one fleeing for its life to other waters or being killed and enslaved by the bigger one. So it's killed le- or enslaved. It's less say. like a slap fight and more like uh, two like rams fighting on top of a mountain, but like inverted. Yeah, I mean they'd be throttling and choking each other to death. And wouldn't it be funny if it was like gentleman's code and they just like literally swam at full speed into each other like rams? <laughs> or it was just like one slap at a time, so it's like whack, and then the other one goes whack <laughs> like giraffes. <laughs> Yeah, like giraffe. <laughs> underwater giraffe fight. Yeah, Great. underwater giraffe fight. I like this. Can yeah. we keep can we keep uh balling this one out? Uh yeah, sure. Okay. Uh <laughs> like polar bears. 
and they they just like kind of like get up next to each other, uh-huh. and it's basically the giraffe fight again. Never mind. Let's keep okay, going. Okay, moving on. So <laughs> there is one exception to the this rule of krakens kind of staying away from each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, once every century or so, there's an event called the Hateful Compulsion. Um, and at- <laughs> great, I like these in D and D. There seems to be some some real choice yeah uh, so it's stuff. A, at, it's at this time that krakens from across the sea will instinctively come together in the deep ocean trenches to mate this fleshy and writhing ritual is abhorrent to all krakens uh involved due to their normally cold and calculating minds okay but no kraken can resist their lustful compulsions <laughs> at this time they just can't. they just can't help themselves they have hate sex they have hate sex and everyone hates it the whole time <laughs> God so, damn. Oh, the hateful man. compulsion is especially horrifying for the male kraken involved. Uh, males frequently get torn to pieces by the less numerous and much larger females. Oh. Because the females are basically, they go into this insane frenzy to, and desire to be fertilized, and they just... They just tear them apart. <laughs> <laughs> Calling them a coward the whole yeah. time. <laughs> when uh, when the seas turn black with kraken blood and the limbs and heads of krakens wash ashore in oily froths, the hateful compulsion probably just happened. So the kraken blood is black? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, man, because there's this drink that they discontinued by Captain Morgan called the Kraken. And mm-hmm. It's like black rum. Oh, yeah. I like that drink. It was a good one. I don't think they make it anymore. Uh, I had a real that's probably one of my worst I'm really, hangovers. I'm really from, fucking sad now. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know that. Well, it doesn't. It's been a while, so uh, you're probably not that sad. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so due to the powerful elemental magic inherent in Krakens, uh, particularly violent, hateful compulsions can cause near cataclysmic weather conditions at sea. Uh, we're talking about like storms and whirlpools, like raging for months on end. Oh man! So like there can literally be a maelstrom just blocking off like a peninsula from like getting anywhere, or an island from getting any out, like outside contact, <laughs> because the krakens are just out there fucking. There's it's an old horrible. man that lives on an island, and he he like purposely built his house out of the way on the top, and he sees like tidal waves like berating his <laughs> his land. He's like, the krakens are fucking. <laughs> He's like, goddamn krakens! Kids, get inside. <laughs> <laughs> so to some Krakens, uh, these spawning moots are such a fearful event that they'll go as far as to like self-mutilate or self-surgery themselves or even seek undeath just to avoid them like entirely. Seek undeath? Yeah. Like they'd rather be undead than have to have the urge to go join that blood fest. You can do that? I mean, yeah, you can become a lich. A Behold- Kraken? Beholders and dragons do it. Yeah, you can have a you can have a kraken lich. Why why not? What? Oh, it, that's right. Yeah. You can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I was like, wait, there is a beholder. There is. A yeah, there's a beholder lich. lich yeah. And there's a there's a draco lich. So. Wow, kraken lich. A kraken really lich. Cool. Never yeah. thought of it. Yeah. Now you've a kind critch. of opened me up. I thought it was just maybe those two specific monsters. <laughs> no, no. It's like any any magical. creature uh, of the sufficient intelligence and magical ability can attain lichdom. Do you have a jar? Mm-hmm. Do you do magic? <laughs> You're good. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> so when hide it, that jar. Hide that jar. Never let anyone see that jar. So when it comes to Kraken Origins, each edition has its own lore. Um, 5e posits that at the beginning of time, the Krakens were created to serve the fear, as fierce warriors for the wars of the gods. Uh, they eventually broke free of their shackles, never to serve any being again, but to rule the world the gods had them fight for. It's so Greco-Roman, n- right? Um, yeah, I would say so. Um, the Kraken is under control of Poseidon, pretty much. And there's Isn't there like one? Isn't it the Kraken? Like um, in Greek okay. mythology? The Kraken's not from Greek mythology. Is it from... Um, it's from Scandinavian lore, Norse sagas. But they definitely hit... Liam Meeson definitely hits me with that, that line. Yeah, right? yeah, he and does. He is being Greek. Yeah, but I'm not sure if Clash of the Titans is based off of an actual Greek myth or not i'm not yeah, clear like if on it's that close, if it's close enough it might to the, be to but i'm not i'm it's, not clear it's definitely based off of like and stuff. if it is i don't i'm not sure if a kraken exists in that myth that clash of titans is just a remake yeah. i well, all my research on like the real life mythological kraken it was all norse and northern european okay but where was i oh yeah um so when it comes to like this this fight or this war the gods created the krakens for i think it makes sense that this might have been the war versus the aboliths because we know the aboliths were there before like the world was made and yeah. they warred against the gods right. so it makes sense that to fight these you know ocean dwelling creatures they created ocean dwelling monsters mm. so that's that's one 
origin story, Dragon Magazine 334 posits that the Krakens believe they originated from a being called the Great Unbeheld, a Kraken of impossible size who sleeps beneath the ocean and whose tentacles thread throughout the entire world. Oh, what? Um, yeah, only by conquering every ocean and all that dwell within it can the Great Unbeheld be awoken to flood the world and give the Krakens dominions over all. Um, those that believe this say that the Great Unbeholden is the favorite child of Panzeriel, the writhing one, who is like an intermediate god of evil aquatic creatures, corruption, and darkness. Most Krakens don't have a religious beliefs, but those that do worship Panzeriel. Wow. Yeah. So okay. there that is, yeah. Uh, Fori actually, uh, Fori designates Krakens as these mad alien monstrosities from the far realm that made their way to the prime by swimming across the astral sea. That's pretty cool. And uh, I think all of these origins are pretty fucking solid. So pick and choose, you know, do what you, do what you want with any I of these. I like the tentacles through the world thing. Yeah, that is, that's good imagery right there. And, and it's very a great terrifying. way to explain sinkholes. Sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Kraken's definitely. feeling around, snatching sure. people. <laughs> that's definitely one way to, to put it. So any questions about Krakens before we get into their pretty extensive stats? Um I I have a question for you. Okay, yeah. What's up? Uh if you saw a Kraken, what would you say to it? Um I'd scream, probably. I mean I'd probably yell scream and faint. Would you scream uh, anything like a sentence? No. I was I was hoping you'd say what's Kraken? No, we do it one more time. No, Come no, on. not a third time. No, <laughs> all right, let's get to the stats. Okay. So, uh, Krakens, like I said, they're they're very, very powerful on the same level of dragons, and because of that, they have both regional effects and layers with layer actions and legendary actions. So, CR twenty four, like, CR twenty three, like red dragon status twenty three, which 23. is I think equivalent to the red dragon. I think the red dragon was twenty three. Uh, yeah. It might have been 24, but either way, it's the same We're ballpark. right in there. Right in there. So for regional effects, uh, the region containing a Kraken's lair is warped by the creature's blasphemous presence, creating the following magical effects. The Kraken can alter the weather at will within a six-mile radius of its lair. Um, the effect is identical to the control weather spell. Excuse me. Uh, water elementals coalesce within six miles of the lair. These elementals can't leave the water and have an intelligence charisma score of one. So that's the negative five. It just like spawns. Yeah, it just water spawns water elementals spirits. within cool. its realm. Yeah, aquatic creatures within six miles of layer that have an intelligence score of two or lower are charmed by the kraken and aggressive towards intruders. Nice. So it like really aquamans it up and like just has like an army of yeah sea so critters. I was gonna. I was. <clears throat> I was secretly in my head counting the Marvel, uh, the Marvel powers. So you uh-huh. have Storm from X Men. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know what superhero spawns like elemental creatures, but there's probably one that like tears holes in reality. <clears throat> Hydra Man can uh, kind of like he's a water mancer. Is that a Marvel character? Yeah, it is. It's a Spider Man villain. And then That's right. um, we just talked about it. Namor, I think, can also command uh, water creatures, kind of like Aquaman. Like so. Aquaman. So and we he's have Aquaman, Marvel. Namor, etc. Namor. Yeah, we have Namor, Storm, and Hydra Man. So far, just like yeah. piling those <clears throat> into a big tentacle monster. Indeed. So when it comes to layer actions, um, on initiative count of twenty. The Kraken takes a layer action to cause one of the following magical effects. Um, First one, a strong current moves through the Kraken's layer. Each creature within 60 feet of the Kraken must succeed on a DC 23 strength saving throw or be pushed up to 60 feet away from the Kraken. On a success, the creature is pushed 10 feet away still. Oh, wow. Uh, Second action, creatures in the water within 60 feet of the Kraken have vulnerability to lightning damage until initiative count 20 on the next round. And the Kraken, I believe, can cause lightning storms, so... I was going to say, I was like, well, everybody's going to get hit by that. Not the Kraken. Yeah, not the okay. Kraken. Krakens are actually immune to lightning damage. That's it breaks all Game Freak logic. Yeah, I know. It does. <laughs> Kraken's not a Pokemon. No. So the final layer action. Thanks, it, well, I wasn't yeah. sure. <laughs> the final layer action that it could take is the water in the Kraken's layer becomes electrically charged. All creatures within 120 feet of the Kraken must succeed on a DC 23 constitution saving throw um, taking 3d6 lightning damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. Is there a superhero that can just like make electricity? Um, oh, I saw uh, Godspeed in the Flash. Uh, Static Shock. Static Shock. Yeah. He's a real superhero. Yeah, he is. DC, but not not Marvel, but I like cool. Static Shock a lot. So this is yeah. more like an electric heel. That's what I thought of. Yeah, kind of. It's like using something in its body to so, do that. So those are the regional layer effects. Let's get into like, like look at this stat block. It's fucking huge. It's a whole fucking page. Yeah, it's giant. So, uh, yeah, Gargantuan Monstrosity, also in parentheses, Titan, Chaotic Evil, Kraken. Oh, can we go over the, so yeah, in, yeah. in context, like, Gargantuan is at the top of the list? or is Yeah, it's at the top of the list when it comes to size. So it's, it's the like biggest giant yeah. is below it? Uh, yeah, it's and uh, then huge. And then huge, and then large, and then medium, like that, yeah. Okay. So uh, the arm- forbidden sizes, at, at, they sell them at 7-Eleven pretty much exclusively. 
What? <laughs> Gargantuan. It's oh, like the big gotcha, gulp. like the big gulps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? So uh, Krakens have a natural armor of 18, uh, 472 HP. They have a God damn they have it. they have a walking speed of twenty feet, a okay. uh, swim speed of sixty feet, which I think is actually kind of slow. Uh, the, uh, I feel like they should be able to move ninety feet in the water, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, they're they're um, yeah. Just to get like a gander at these ability stats, they're pretty substantial. Thirty strength, only eleven dexterity, but twenty five constitution, twenty two intelligence. That's super fucking smart. Uh, Eighteen wisdom and twenty charisma. Um, they have damage immunities to lightning and all bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. That's from non-magical weapons. They cannot be frightened and they cannot be paralyzed. Um, they have true sight within 120 feet. They understand abyssal, celestial, infernal, and primordial, but they can't speak. But they can use telepathy, so they can't speak. Mm. Um, so they have three features. The first is amphibious. Uh, the Kraken can breathe both air and water. Um, their second is freedom of movement. The Kraken ignores difficult terrain and magical effects can't reduce its speed or cause it to be restrained it could spend five feet of movement to escape from non-magical restraints or being grappled so this means even when it's on land uh difficult terrain cannot affect it yeah there's no releasing <clears throat> the kraken the kraken never got released it's just always been released yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> uh, and the final feature is called siege monster the kraken deals double damage to objects and structures <laughs> I, I think that's really cool also terrifying if you're in a fucking boat this coincides with my like <laughs> these are rant like they fight like rams where they just like plow into each other yeah sure yeah, yeah. absolutely so um the first action that's listed is the multi-attack the crack can make three tentacle attacks each of which can replace with one of its fling attacks which we'll get to <clears throat> so the kraken has a bite attack it's a plus 18 to hit reach five feet one target uh it's 3d8 plus 10 piercing damage if the target is a large or smaller creature um, grappled by the Kraken, the creature is swallowed, and the grapple ends. Wow. While swallowed, the creature is blinded and restrained. It has total cover against attacks and other effects outside the Kraken, and it takes 42 acid damage, or 12d6 acid damage, at the start of each of its turns. God damn. So the <clears> grapple, <throat> mechanically, I understand why they say, have to say the grapple ends, but the grapple's just beginning, if you think about it. Yeah, you're basically. In, you're going to super grapple. The grapple ends, and now you die. <laughs> uh, if the Kraken takes 50 damage or more in a single turn from a creature... Inside of it, the Kraken must succeed a DC 25 constitution saving throw. Wow. At the end of the turn, or regurgitate all swallowed creatures, which fall prone in a space within 10 feet of the Kraken. If the Kraken dies, the swallowed creature is no longer restrained by it and can escape from the corpse using 15 feet of movement exiting. Prone. Okay. So, yeah. Wow. If you get swallowed, the only way you're getting out is by doing enough damage from within it. That, I mean, that, you're gonna get you're gonna get some yeah, damage from yeah. in there. That being said, I think the worst thing a kraken could do would be to swallow a wizard. That yeah, would be the I fucking worst say, thing. You're yeah. just gonna area of effect everything. Yeah, it's gonna be a horror show. And you're gonna look at the fighter that got swallowed with you and like, sorry, dude, you gonna you, die. Yeah, you gonna die. I'm dude. getting out of here. I'm getting the fuck I'm out. Killing this thing it's on so the true. way out. So the tentacle attack, uh, plus eighteen to hit, reach thirty feet. So yeah, there's quite the range on this motherfucker. Um, one target, it does 3d6 plus 10 bludgeoning damage, and the target is grappled with an escape DC of 18. Until the grapple ends, the target is restrained. Uh, the Kraken has 10 tentacles, each of which can grapple one target. Sick. Okay. So, not only can the Kraken, like, bite and swallow you after it grabs you in its tentacle, it actually has a, a secondary move it can choose to do rather than that. Um, it's called Fling. One large or smaller object held or... Oh, yeah. Object held or creature grappled by the Kraken is thrown up to 60 feet in a random direction and knocked <laughs> prone. So if this thing's above the surface, it could just throw you 60 feet diagonal up somewhere. And that's, oof, man, that's brutal. Uh, it takes a bludgeon damage on the way down. Okay. Um, if a thrown target strikes a solid surface, the target takes three... Oh, no, it takes 1d6 bludgeon damage for every 10 feet it was thrown. If a target is thrown at another creature, that creature must succeed a DC 18 dexterity saving throw or take the same damage and be knocked prone. So they both take it or just the dude that gets They both hit? take the damage oh, and it. the and they both get knocked prone. Okay, so that would be crazy. It has like a push ability. So yeah. you push that guy far away and then fling Chaboy at Chaboy. Yeah, 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 exactly. And may potentially knock you both out yeah, This thing is a hell of a beast. I love this stat block. I'm, this is one of my favorite stat blocks I've ever read. It's um, it's gross. It's it can do all kinds of cool stuff. It's versatile. It, you can get creative with it. It causes a lot of problems for like this feels 
exactly how it should, which is one giant monster that's difficult for even a whole party to fight. Yeah, I was gonna say you yeah. need a you need multiple parties. You yeah. need a ten man team minimum <laughs> probably to take this thing well, like, yeah. handily. But my point is like when you when you look at like the dragon block, it like it just doesn't feel like something that could take on a whole party. Yeah. You know like, what I mean? Or like it can, but like on more even footing. This seems like something that can really be tough for even a, multiple people to tackle. No, yeah. Which is because, what it should be. Because of all of its versatility, like you exactly. said, all of its power, all the types of moves it does. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then finally, the final move it gets outside of legendary actions is called Lightning Storm. Uh, the Kraken magically creates three bolts of lightning, each of which can strike a tar target the Kraken can see within 120 feet of it. A target must make a DC 23 dexterity saving throw or take 40 10 lightning damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. So that's, again, these are three lightning bolts. So let's say it targets you three times and you fail three times. We're talking uh, 12 D10 lightning damage to you. Jesus. Yeah, and that's devastating. Jeez. Um, next, we have legendary action, action. So the Kraken can take three legendary actions choosing from the options below. Uh the first one is it just gets an extra tentacle attack or extra fling attack. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the cost of two actions, the Kraken can use an extra lightning storm attack. And then lastly, this costs all three actions at once. It's called Ink Cloud. While underwater, the Kraken expels an Ink Cloud in a 60-foot radius, which is really huge considering it's already gargantuan. Yeah. Uh, the cloud spreads around corners, and that area is heavily obscured to creatures other than the Kraken. Each creature must... Each creature other than the Kraken that ends its turn there must succeed a DC 23 constitution saving throw or take 3d10 poison damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. A strong current disperses a cloud which otherwise disappears at the end of the Kraken's next turn. Honestly, that's not that great of a move to spend all three of your uh, actions on. I mean, I guess it's good for an escape, but like the amount of damage it does is pretty minimal compared to like another lightning storm. Escaping, plus another tentacle attack. Escaping is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably what it's meant for, is for the escape. Um, There's whole spells dedicated to getting away. Yeah, I that's mean, true. And that is one thing that I find that the Kraken is lacking, is it doesn't have, like, natural spellcasting ability, which I think it should. If you're that intelligent and you have tentacles, um, you know, like a, like opposable appendages that can, like, grab stuff, you should be able to cast spells. It, it, I but almost, it is very potent. I felt like the lightning stuff, like like making lightning bolts, that's that's pretty that magical. Is, that is. It's just they really are super intelligent. I would say if like if this is like end game stuff and maybe uh you think the Kraken isn't enough to take on your five level twenties, uh definitely give it spellcasting. And like that'll push it over the edge for you. Do you have any good suggestions for spellcasting off the top I, of your head for I it? mean, obviously like any thunder or lightning spells, a lot of elemental control weather type stuff. Um but I'll I don't also get into like maybe like planar stuff like teleportation and shit Ooh, yeah again this thing has a 22 intelligence like it does have an ability that's ancient. like opening it sound to me it sounds like it's opening rifts to the yeah plane of water and exactly like sprites are coming through stuff like that would be super cool yeah that's a really good one yeah you ready so, for my campaign hook yeah let's let's hear it the kraken and the aboliths are working together and oh no the kraken is who's been throwing all the aboliths into lakes Okay, yeah, you're just carrying them up the river. You're just right. like grabbing them and throwing them into like yeah. places. I can see that. There you go. There, yeah, that's there you it. Go. That was the whole yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, cool. That's, yeah. That'd be fun. It's actually pretty sick, right? Yeah, I think it'd be fun. <laughs> I think it'd be pretty cool. Dungeons and Dragons, more like Dungeons and Krakens. So, with that being said, I think we can get ready for a long rest. Yeah. <laughs> and I think today we want to talk about Super Quest Saga. That's a super quest. And, and it's, it's a saga. saga. Yeah, it definitely is. It's a show where we play Dungeons and Dragons here on the, the Dungeon Guest YouTube channel. It's also a podcast. We have yeah. a second podcast. So if you're listening to this in podcast form, you might like that also in podcast form. So definitely. feel free to subscribe to that podcast and check it out. We're playing uh we're playing D D. It's in space. Oh, hang on. Let me let go me ahead. handle the context. Yeah, go <clears> ahead. <throat> go ahead. Um, space <laughs> Yes, it's in space. Fucking elves. Yeah, there are space elves. Imperial Galactic Space Elves. Which are a major problem for you guys. I'm writing a song part. called Here Come the Fucking Space Elves right yeah, now. Indeed. <laughs> so yeah, it's an intergalactic adventure where a party is trying to kind of come get to the bottom of a strange mystery and uh, just kind of stay alive and explore. Um, so yeah, if you guys are interested in space, you're interested in D and D, you're interested in us playing D and D, check out Super Quest Saga. It's on YouTube. It's on uh, our RSS feed. Space! It's on iTunes and any podcast app that you could find. And with that, I think we can call it a Let's game. Let's call it a game. And we'll talk to you guys later. The Dungeon Cast.